Sacred sexuality, what is it and how can I get it? Most recently, I've shared with you how to stay sexually healthy and how to avoid the common pitfalls of partnership. But let's get beyond the physical and emotional aspects of sex. Let's talk about the spiritual aspect of sex, which some call conscious sex, conscious connection, or tantric sex. As for me, I will call it sacred sexuality. Let me first caution you, this isn't for everyone. If you're partnered with someone who isn't spiritually awake and doesn't want to be, then they're very unlikely to be open to this. That's just common sense, right? Also, if you're currently in a casual friends with benefits relationship or a this will do until I can do better kind of relationship, well, use this information cautiously. Like I said before, this isn't for everyone, so guard your heart. There are things that I'm going to advise which are meant to be done with someone who's committed to having sex beyond the primal level. If you practice these concepts with someone who's not, then the result could deeply open you up to someone who's closed off, and that could be very painful. To avoid this, practice shared vulnerability and protect your heart by consciously opening it up to someone who's consciously doing the same for you. Conscious sex requires two conscious individuals who are both committed to having sex beyond the primal level. There are four main concepts when practicing conscious sex, also known as sacred sexuality. Number one, open up to receive and release. Number two, let go of conditioning and intimacy blocks. Number three, be connected and present. Number four, fully surrender. So let's start with number one, open up to receive and release. Set the tone with an emphasis on sensuality. You can do this by lighting candles, dimming the lights, soaking in a luxurious bath together, giving each other erotic massages, etc. <laughs> However you choose to do this, keep in mind that the point is to be intentional in giving your quality time. This is not about a quickie you know, eight to 10 minutes of sex where you're just there to get off because you had a hard day. No, we're talking about at least a good solid 30 minutes of offering oneself to another. And know that the sacred sexual pros think nothing of giving up to eight hours per session. <laughs> so set apart the time and space to connect and share without pressure. And by being intentional, and making this more like a process or ritual, you will then put greater emphasis on sensuality. And then you'll enjoy pleasure and indulge yourself with all five senses. Don't underestimate the healing power of touch, as many people do. We all need touch. But many of us come from backgrounds where we didn't get it at all, didn't get enough of it, or learn to associate it with negativity. Regardless, sensual massage can melt tension in a person and open them up, not just physically, but also emotionally. Even in the Bible, the laying on of hands is said to have tremendous healing power. For these reasons, I highly recommend taking the time to learn sensual and erotic massage techniques through instructional resources, investing in massage tools and massage oils, Side note, if you're in a pinch, simple coconut oil works as a great massage oil and lubricant. It's affordable, easily accessible, edible, and it's natural. Physical touch is a great way to merge sensuality with sexuality. And being in tune with our sensuality can connect us to our primal urges. But it can also open us up to experiencing raw emotions that more deeply connect us to ourselves and another. Don't underestimate the power of seeing and being seen. Many of us come from backgrounds where we didn't feel seen, heard, or felt by another. Sometimes finding that connection can be as simple as sharing a gaze and holding it for a moment as if to silently say, I see you, I feel you, I want you. Some call this practice soul gazing. I know it might sound sappy, but it doesn't have to be. It can be very seductive. However you choose to see your partner, remember the old adage, the eyes are the windows of the soul. To really see into them can be good for both of you. If it seems like the two of you are out of sync during sex, try to synchronize your breathing for a moment and do a bit of soul gazing. Get on the same page, at the same pace. 
tune in, unify, be of one energy as much as possible. Here's a challenge. 30 days of sensuality. It doesn't have to lead to sex, but it does involve finding ways to infuse more sensuality into your daily life. As an added benefit, you'll likely strengthen your emotional bond. Now, second, let go of conditioning and intimacy blocks. Some of us learn to associate sexuality with disempowerment. And it's been said that memories live in the body and create unconscious contraction and tension. Negative memories can be deeply rooted issues that sensual massage alone cannot heal. And if we're talking about undoing years of inhibition that have become someone's dysfunctional comfort zone, then healing it can be impossible without their full cooperation. Here's a telltale sign of their cooperation. Are they fully vocalizing during sex? Now granted, women tend to vocalize more than men, but are both expressing pleasure during sex? Or is at least one partner holding back the breathing, the sighing, the speaking? This is an important question because in order to release pain, the body needs vocalization. Think of it as a pressure valve on a pressure cooker. If something like shame, stress, or trauma is wound up in the body or the mind, then open vocalization can help release it. Vocalize. Yes, get loud if you want to. Let the neighbors complain. Of course, I know some of you have children. That's a valid issue. But if you're free to get vocal, yet one or both of you is still holding back on this, then you're not fully releasing. To fully release involves letting go of the constriction on your breathing and your voice. That helps carry the pain outside your mind and your body. If you're having trouble with this, then ask yourself why. What are you or they trying to control? What's making you so uncomfortable? What could possibly go wrong or right with more freedom to openly express pleasure? Now, I got to give a warning here. Beware of repressed, constricted vocalization during sex. A partner who's uncomfortable with vocalization is signaling a red flag, showing stored shame and trauma they need to release. It's very likely that this is stemming from repressed sexuality or out of control sexual behavior in their history. And if you ask them to open up more, expressing how much it means to you, but they refuse, then you're probably dealing with someone who wishes to remain unhealed. If you want to feel safe and honored, then boundaries are best for that job. Simply say yes when you mean yes and no when you mean no. Speak of your wants and desires openly without restraint. Granted, it helps to frame your speech in a way that honestly communicates without coming across as critical. And perhaps these conversations are best started before the heat of the moment. To open the dialogue, you could say things like, I really want to try this with you. Or, I really like it when you, I can't get enough of it when you. <laughs> or, remember when you, it drove me crazy for days, couldn't get it out of my head. <laughs> Before and after sex, dare to ask questions like, what types of things do you want to do more of? Ask them what they want to do that you two don't do or don't do enough of. Tell them you want to know what they want. Pay attention and go out of your way to please them. If they say they want something you're not comfortable with, tell them why. You know, express your fears and concerns and under what circumstances you'd be willing to make concessions. During sex, don't be afraid to guide your partner physically, grabbing, pulling them to where and how you like them. That communicates desire. By showing an interest in exploring each other's needs and a willingness to cater to their desires, you learn to please one another in a way that the two of you value. Well, I just wasn't raised like that. I can hear some of you saying, do you hear that? That's the sound of someone clinging to their conditioning, even if it isn't serving them and their partner well. Reminds me of a man I knew who told me that his wife of 29 years never gave him oral sex. Apparently, she wasn't raised like that. Ironically, she thought he was worth marrying, sharing bank accounts with, and having children with, but not worthy enough for oral sex, not once in 29 years. I asked him why he ever even married her. He said, I thought it wasn't a big deal at the time. She was great in every other way, but after 29 years of marriage like that, I realized it is. It's a big deal. 
realize this isn't just about the sex act itself. It's about the heart behind the withholding of the sexual act. It reflects a willingness to deprive pleasure from their lover, to maintain a selfish comfort zone. Furthermore, it reflects a willingness to let this pet issue ruin a relationship. It's a big red flag when someone is more concerned about maintaining their comfort zone than maintaining their marriage. A person's priorities speaks volumes about the condition of their heart. So I want to give a warning here. Beware of partners who have little or no openness for experimentation and variety in a consensual, monogamous relationship. Beware of partners who demand that sex be a certain way every time to suit their individual tastes alone. This is not love. Real love wants to please another. And if there's some sexual hang-up or fetish getting in the way of that, it's likely rooted in an emotional problem that needs healing through two willing partners. Fear of embarrassment and rejection is a huge barrier to intimacy and sexual satisfaction. Never underestimate the number of relationships that fail because of unexpressed and unmet sexual needs and desires. People censor themselves far more than you might imagine. And saving their ego by not telling them how to please you or asking how to better please them never ends well. If you both love each other, there should be no embarrassment or shame. Open dialogue. Explore each other's fantasies. Let him or her know that you want to know his or her fantasies. Make it okay to be weird. Share your weirdness. <laughs> Number three, be connected and present. If you've done steps one and two, then step three shouldn't be difficult. By opening up to intimacy and letting go of anything that may block it, you've opened your heart up and your whole being to share vulnerably. Through eye contact and vocalization, you've opened yourself up to releasing energies which stop us from being fully present. The three keys to practicing sensual connection are, number one, don't let your mind drift. Focus on the sensations in your body in the moment rather than making mental judgments about what's happening, what's happened, or what's going to happen. Don't let your mind drift. Stay present. Number two, feel your emotions. Allow feelings to rise to the surface and then release them. Don't try to think or analyze your feelings. Simply feel them rise and release. Before and after sex, think. You can think then, right? But during sex, feel. Number three, affirm yourself. Validate your deservingness to feel pleasure and to honor your body's needs. This is not only good for our bodies, but also for our psyches. If I may say so, the best sexual connection I had was in a union where both of us were always trying to wow each other and drive each other to the edge of our limits. <laughs> of course, you have to get into their skin, so to speak, and figure out what's going to make them lose their breath. It was quite fun, actually, to keep finding ways to outdo the other. I'd say it was the best form of one-upmanship in the bedroom that you can imagine. Definitely kept things exciting and interesting in a very rewarding way. When we don't deliberately practice being conscious of desires, feelings, and sensations, then sex becomes goal-oriented and our bodies become regarded as utilitarian. In other words, sex becomes a task or a chore. Without a focus on our senses, it'll lack subtle and even sublime pleasure. Worse, it will weaken rather than strengthen the emotional connection to the point that people get numbed out or disassociate during sex. Unfortunately, some things can hinder connection during sex. I think we've all experienced this at least once, feeling like someone's prodding you or pushing your buttons, trying to get a response, but you're not into it or vice versa. Maybe it starts off connected, but somehow along the way becomes disconnected. You'll know this has happened because it's like you're out of step with your partner. The two of you are dancing to different beats. This could be because of body shame or localizing pleasure to only our sexual organs and pleasure centers, in which case reconnection is needed to plug back into all your senses and those of your partner. Assuming the lost connection is nothing serious, you can reconnect by asking yourself, where are my thoughts? In the here and now? Is this just sex or am I connecting with this person at a heart level? How can we tune back into each other? This doesn't have to be woo-woo or super spiritual. It really doesn't. It's simply about showing up for yourself and your partner. And if you can't do that from an honest space, don't fake it. 
If you feel like you're just going through the motions with no heart in it, then maybe you should address that apart from sex. Here's another warning. If you keep getting out of sync with your partner or the partner can never seem to get in sync with you, it's time to take a time out and ask some serious questions. Are they addicted to porn? If so, porn has a way of rewiring a person's brain and the way they connect to sex. What's worse is that given enough time, a porn addict's brain will be trained to only ejaculate with images, not actual people. They become such a master of their own domain that they mentally and physically cannot serve the needs of another. In short, porn is a mind F. Sometimes being fully plugged in allows different parts of yourself to rise to the surface and be revealed through anything from laughter to tears. Are you comfortable with a fuller range of emotional expression during sex? Are you able to share and reflect back to another those emotions? Are you able to allow the experience and exchange to unfold without fear of being judged, shamed, or rejected? Embrace all, reject nothing. These are important considerations because heart-based sex can sometimes release shadow elements within our personalities. For example, I know a couple who had an awful breakup, but after several months of separation, they reconciled. After they reconciled, the sex between them ended with her crying after orgasm. Why? Remember in step two, I talked about vocalizing. This was her way of releasing grief. It was her way of processing pain. It was her pathway to healing. Unfortunately, he had no idea what to do with this, which by the way, was to console her and comfort her. Instead, he awkwardly looked upon her as if he was the one who needed reassurance. For this reason, an opportunity for healing both of them was lost. That example shows how aspects, shadow aspects, can come out during heart-based sex, especially if it's involving a person or relationship that's been deeply damaged. And even if someone never opens up at that same level as you, there are valuable lessons that come from this. In this case, her lesson was that she had partnered with someone who was too insecure to offer her any emotional security. If you were in a similar situation, this would illuminate how and why your effort wasn't being matched. Learning those lessons, difficult and dark as they may be, comes with a gift of greater knowledge to recognize our needs and those who will meet them. Number four, fully surrender. If you've been so fortunate to have found a sexual partner with whom you can connect at a heart level and a soul level, count yourself uncommonly blessed. To achieve this requires emotional and spiritual attunement from both partners, something I think is quite rare. It's not necessarily that you have to feel or believe the same things in order to make it flow. It's more that there has to be a willingness to allow for differences in a supportive and complimentary way. When people don't make allowances for their partner and have that reciprocated for whatever reason, then it becomes impossible for them to fully surrender to transcendent sex. That is, sex that transcends the mundane. They are forever dealing with superficial, surface-level experiences because that's their comfort zone. Problem is that this kind of sex is like fast food restaurants. There's not much to savor. To get beyond this and into sex that's more like a full course meal, give yourself permission to explore and be explored for deep merging. Look upon your partner as uncharted territory. New language, new rules, new geography, etc. Give each other permission to unravel the complexity of your sexuality and the power of it. In this way, you begin to associate sex with something used for empowerment, not manipulation or control. Let go of beliefs that you have to orgasm every time you have sex. Allow for sexual encounters that don't result in that. Deprogram yourself from the expectation of that. Reprogram the expectation of connection. By not focusing on the end result and your own pleasure, you allow yourself to be driven in the moment by the heart, not the ego. You allow yourself to be in attunement with your partner's heart as well. In this way, 
you're not making love, you're being love at a soul level. And when you do finally orgasm, don't concentrate on the orgasm alone. Instead, let this energy release throughout you. In other words, allow for a full bodied orgasm, as opposed to releasing it in a way that restricts the energy to your sexual organs. In this way, we consciously use the energy exchange with one another in a powerfully expansive way. Here's a challenge. After play chakra prayer. <laughs> so don't forget after play, right? <laughs> you know, that's when you admire, you caress, you cuddle, you kiss after sex. It's also a time when you can communicate and connect about how great that was and what you want to do again or try the next time. But on a more spiritual note, you can also take this time to lay hands on each other, specifically on each of your partner's seven chakras and pray healing energies over them, working your way down from their crown chakra, basically at the top of their head, to the heart chakra, their root chakra, all the way, which is at their pelvis. If you don't feel comfortable praying out loud, then just pray within yourself as you're laying your hands upon them. It might be too serious for some. For others, it's a calming and soothing way to close out your lovemaking session. Thanks for listening. If you want to listen to part two, as soon as it's available, click here. And in part two, we'll talk about what does sex with an empath in all practicality look and feel like. And we'll talk about maybe some things you could buy to help with the experience, yes. And we'll also talk about unblocking a blocked sacral chakra, okay? And so if you're interested in that, I hope you'll join me. Till next time, thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Be blessed.